Come on, up you get, boy. Difficult to watch, but for none more so than Saul Derman, the owner of the Aquila Game Reserve, who watched for six days as the rhino bull battled to survive before succumbing to its injuries. The reserve, one of only two in the Western Cape that keep rhino, is still reeling from August's attack, which claimed the lives of two of its six rhinos. And at current rates, at least one reserve is dealing with such an incident every day. It's a crisp blue morning at the Karoo Reserve. The tranquil setting makes it hard to believe the carnage which took place here just weeks ago. This is Sol Derman's um, first visit to the spot which has become Apsis Grey. This is kind of where it, where it all happened originally and this is where Apsis is buried. Um, the first rhino that was brought to the Western Cape in 250 years since they were shot out. We did some very daring operations where we had to literally um, sy use syringes to get drugs in him and he was still alive and turning around fast although in a lot of pain and literally crying like a person for five days. It was the worst thing I've ever heard. Um, we had a second rhino lying um, very close proximity, pretty much just over here. And um, and that was actually Absa's daughter, who um, it was the first rhino born in the Western Cape in 250 years since they were shot out by hunters. Although the young female made a full recovery, her behavior hints at the trauma she experienced. Derman says private reserves are increasingly in the firing line and can ill afford the astronomical costs involved in protecting their animals from poachers. I mean, our expenses before the poaching incident for our anti-poaching teams uh, we, it was costing us 40, 50,000 rand a month. And that's gone up to over 100,000 rand a month now. And that's unaffordable um, to a lot of game reserves, especially the, the, like the smaller private game reserves. Yeah. Okay, um, yeah, this is where we found the, the second rhino. Um, and we found it was already dead. And this is where we buried the body. It actually found it. Like with any crime, if the police um, are very active in an area, the crime spreads to easier targets, to easier areas where it hasn't, it hasn't been that active. And now the game, all, all the poachings come down to the Eastern Cape and to the Western Cape, where the game reserves haven't been really prepared. At current skyrocketing poaching rates, it's a fact that future generations will not have the chance to experience seeing rhinos in the wild. Every 21 hours there's a rhino poached and um, those sort of statistics are horrific. They definitely, um, extinction is guaranteed at that sort of rate um, and, and it's increasing, it's increasing. A young calf which should be a beacon of hope and cause for celebration is now a financial liability. But Derman is not taking the poaching attack lying down. Um, we've got a Section 21 non-profit organization that we launched in the last three weeks called Saving Private Rhino. I can tell you now that Apsis' death will indirectly save many rhinos lives. I mean, they've got us motivated, we've got a um, non-profit cause started and stuff like that. We're going to be training anti-poaching, we're going to be doing all these initiatives that, um, in Apsis' name and that are going to be saving rhino in South Africa. The crisis looks set to continue, with poachers becoming more brazen and highly organized. Seoul hopes a training program to establish specialized vets may at least help more animals survive attacks. But without a concerted international effort to disrupt the supply chain and demand for rhino horn, South Africa's rhinos face a bleak future. Aleta Gardner, Eyewitness News, Aquila Game Reserve, Western Cape.